Sorry to get you out of bed, Slattery. All right, sir. I'm afraid it's bad news. Rudolf Frenzel escaped from Wormwood Scrubs tonight. Did he now? Now, this is the situation. We arrested Frenzel before he could leave the country with some very important information. He's obviously been got out in order to extract that information. And seeing that it's of a highly technical and scientific nature, my bet is that they'll take him to Moscow for interrogation by their top boys. We must stop him getting there. If there's a vulnerable point in Frenzel's escape route, we'll find it. You've got to find it. And you've got to kill him. Yes. The main problem, sir, is going to be to find the man to do it. We can't use any of our regulars. For a job of this sort, we need a man who's totally uncompromised. Completely unknown over there. Where the hell can you find him at such short notice? I don't know, sir. Now, you listen to me. You've got to find the right man. I don't care who he is or what he's doing now, what he thinks of all this. You've got to find him, and you've got to make him do exactly as you want. I don't care whether you lie, steal, or cheat. I don't care whether you use blackmail or drugs or beat hell out of him. Frenzel has got to be killed. <laughs> Welcome, Comrade Frenzel. It has been decided that a few days enjoying the peace of the French countryside would do us all good. Especially since British intelligence is buzzing like a hive of summer bees. And we don't want you to get stung, do we? <laughs> don't be alarmed. We have planned a nice quiet route to Moscow. Safe from the British bees. Any luck? Well, sir, I've been right through the file and there's no one suitable. Nothing in central records either. What about using a regular? Too risky. <clears throat> we can't take a chance of a regular being recognized. Hmm. Well, what do we do, sir? <laughs> I don't know. Get me the minister. Sir? Get me the minister straight away. Good morning, Mrs. Ruddick. Good morning, Mr. Laker. Patrick, did you tell the kids about a trip to the Leipzig fair? Of course. And what did they say? They were jealous, naturally. Especially when I told them we were going on a ten-day trip down the Rhine afterwards. Yes, that'll be great fun. Did you know the fair's over 500 years old? No, I didn't, Patrick. It'll be smashing to see it. Mmm, smashing. By the way, you're going to the fair to see the exhibits, not to be one. So how about getting your hair cut? Very amusing. See you later, Dad. Right. Why do you think Laker's our man, Slattery? I knew him from the war, sir. He was seconded to my unit from the OSS. Uh, you've got his war record in front of you. You'll find it's pretty good. It's perfect. And since the war, he's been absolutely straight. Not been involved in anything? Absolutely nothing, sir. I'd forgotten all about him. Thought he'd gone back to the States. Then this morning I saw his picture in the paper. 
won an award for his chair design. And of all things, he's off to the Leipzig trade fair the day after tomorrow. How are we for time? You've got uh, liaison's report on Frenzel, sir. He won't be travelling immediately. Slattery, I've got to see the Prime Minister this morning. I'm going to be asked some questions. I'm going to have to give some definite answers. No ifs or buts. So I'm going to ask you to give me a definite answer to one question. Will you be able to make Laker kill Frenzel? Good morning, Mr. Laker. Good morning, John. How are you keeping? Very well, sir. Thank you. the award without you. Three cheers for Mr. Laker. Hip, 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 Yes, put him through, please. Sam, how are you? Very well. And you? Fine. What's it been, Sam? How long since we've seen each other? Oh, I don't know. I... I believe that everyone was still singing the Chattanooga Choo Choo. <laughs> so they were. Saw your picture in the paper, Sam. Congratulations. No, thank you very much. Sam, I wonder if we could meet. Uh, when, Martin? This afternoon. Well, I'm not certain. Well, look, I'm sorry to rush you, but uh, I'm tied up the rest of this week and most of next as well. I'd like to see you. Okay, just uh, tell me where. You know that new building, St. Giles Circus? Just ask at the desk. Still in the same old business, eh, Martin? Not exactly. Make it four o'clock, Sam. How do we get Laker to kill Frenzel? Yes. Well, I've had a look at the file on your man. I think I might have a few ideas. It better work. I'm afraid there's no guarantee. It's a question of motivation and response. If we can find the right motivation, we hope we'll get the required response. You've got to understand, Mr. Slattery, this is an extremely intricate situation. So many factors to be taken into account. Doctor, you don't seem to understand. I'm under a certain amount of pressure. I realize the situation perfectly well, Mr. Slattery. Lake is coming round at four o'clock. We've got to have something to work on. I can't just say, uh, look, Sam, while you're in Leipzig, we'd like you to kill someone for us. No, you're quite right. But you could get him to do something simple for you. Something that would only take a few minutes of his time. Do you know, I think that's how we'll start. We've got to get him to make a commitment, no matter how small. He is traveling with a boy. Yes. That's important. If we can get Laker to do something for you while in Leipzig, remembering he's got his son with him, then I think we'll be able to build up our case on that. It's fine, Doctor. The son Laker I knew wouldn't give you the time of day if you couldn't come up with a pretty good reason for wanting him. Well, that's just what we're going to have to do, Mr. Slattery. We're going to have to find him a good reason. Now, 
What time do you say he was coming around to see you? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. I want you to tell me everything you know about Sam Laker. I need an experience from his past. Something that he's buried in his mind, but he still feels guilty about. You've got to find it, dig it out, then use that guilt to motivate the response we need. In other words, Mr. Slattery, we need a bait. There's insufficient desks, chairs, typewriters. My partition isn't here. And where's my carpet? Sam. There's a department moving in here on Wednesday. <laughs> You're looking marvelous, Sam. Good to see you again. You're looking rather fit yourself, Martin. How are you? Sit down, sit down. A few gray hairs here and there, a few gray hairs. Straight scotch, Sam? Is it still, um, straight scotch? Yes, fine. Thank you. Cheers. Here's to you. Thought about you a lot, Sam. We got along. We never had any fist fights, anyway. You married? Believe I heard that? That's right, Martin. My wife died, however. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. About eight years ago. I'm sorry. You? Me? Oh, yes, I'm married. Three children, what's more, all crossing the earth. You got a boy, haven't you? Yes, his name's Patrick. Martin, you, uh... Ask me to come over here, now, what's it you want? Why don't you do me a favor? What kind of favor? Is it next week you're going to East Germany with him? Leipzig? I was hoping you'd deliver a message for me. But why me? Did you run out of your regular couriers? Well, that's your availability, Sam. Plus the fact that you're, um, totally uncompromised over there. Still the same old jargon. <laughs> It'll only take ten minutes of your time, Sam. No, I'm afraid not. Sam, do you remember what it's like to hold on? Waiting, praying somebody's going to come through for you. Well, there's someone hanging on now. You could have him off the rack by Wednesday. I'm afraid not. You'll have to get someone else. Sam. Yes? The person holding on is Karen. Karen? Karen? That's right, Sam. Karen Gisavius. You mean... after all of these years? She's one of our best, Sam. That's why it's so galling to have her out on a limb like this. How long have you known she's been alive? Goodish time, Sam. Uh, some little time. What's the problem? What happened? There's been a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? Not a slip-up. Uh, no one's been uncovered. Nothing as serious as that. The result is the contact's been broken and it's imperative we make the damage good. She's holding on. She needs help. Think about it. Ring me. Let me know what you decide. Get me this number any time. hasn't telephoned yet. I'd better give him a ring. I wouldn't advise that. You've slipped in the bait. Now give him the chance to bite. He's got to go back 23 years. He's got to face up to an experience he's tried to forget. Give him time.
Slattery, you've got your man. Oh, that's fine, Sam. You won't regret it. <laughs> uh, incidentally, I'll need your watch for a couple of hours. Send it over in the morning, will you? Goodbye. Notify Karen Gisavius to expect a visitor. But don't tell her who. Yes, sir. Laker is watching his final instructions this afternoon. Pick a casual spot, preferably with music. Psychologically, I want the atmosphere to be soothing, to relax Laker, to put his mind off guard, because subconsciously he'll be looking to catch you out. So act naturally, matter of fact, as if you're asking him to step out and buy you a pack of cigarettes. You can be friendly, but you must also be firm. I thought this would be a good place to meet. Sit down. How good are you on telephone numbers, Sam? Try me. Double three four two eight six. Thirty three forty two eighty six. Salt it away. Got it? I will have. By the way, um. Here's your watch. There's a jeweler in the Louisenstrasse. Five minutes taxi ride away from your hotel. The name's Chroma Decker. Just ask them to fit a new watch strap. Nothing else? Nothing else. When do I get the watch back? There and then. The message is in the strap, isn't it? What message, Sam? Just go into that shop. Ask them to fit a strap and push off. Get on over to the fair. Start your holiday. Now tell me about the telephone number, Martin. Where does it come in? It won't come in. Call it insurance, Sam. Wise virgin common sense. Has it lodged, incidentally? 334286. It's like the emergency handle on the train. It's a million to one against you having to use the thing, but it's reassuring to know that it's there. And the least I can do is draw your attention to its existence. Get me? I got you. If you ever have to use it, just say, Peter recommended you. Peter recommended me. Go to Cromadecker's the afternoon you get there, will you, Sam? Karen's in that shop, isn't she? And after 20 years, you expect me to walk in there, exchange this strap, turn around and walk out again, just like that. Is that it? You'd rather not do it, Sam. I didn't say that. I was merely underlining the extent of the commitment. She'll be the best judge of what's possible and what isn't. Have a good trip, Sam. Inform the Minister Lakers on his way to Leipzig. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Jackson's inside. Hmm. C.O. Jackson. Morning. Heard a lot about you. Highly recommended. Sit down. Thank you. Well, what do you think? Most ingenious. Can you handle your end? Shouldn't be any bother at all. Shouldn't. But it might. I want you to understand one thing, Jackson. You'd better study the details of this plan backwards, forwards, inside out, upside down. Fail to dot one I or cross one T and we'll all be out of business. Sir, the minister wishes to know what time Lake will arrive in Leipzig. Two hours from now.
Yes, Patrick, just a little warm. Let's go. Are we going to the fair first, Dad? Uh, not directly, Patrick. We'll first go to the hotel and check in. Have you been? We had travel. Lake Ruby and Leipzig by now. Now get your gear unloaded. Get set up over there in hangar number one. And get this plane out of here before somebody spots us. Now I'm going back to London in the chopper. I'll be in my office in 30 minutes from now. And I'll expect the first message on my desk by the time I get back. 30 minutes. Good time, Patrick? Yes, Dad. Uh, Patrick, I've got to do uh, an errand for the office. Shouldn't take me too long. You'll be all right, won't you? Of course. Don't worry. Fine. Take me about an hour and I'll meet you in reception. Okay. Don't buy out the whole place. Anymore. Was wünschen Sie? Yes, I'd like a strap for my watch. Any special kind? Something like the one I'm wearing. Um, it's English leather. I can't give you leather. Imitation is the best I have. The alternative would be plastic. The imitation will be fine. Hello, Karen. Sam? Sam. You look fine, Karen. You've hardly changed. After the war, I 
tried desperately to find you. I even wrote the Red Cross several letters, but they came back unanswered. I thought you were dead until 48 hours ago, until I got mixed up in this thing. I thought about you too, many, many times. Wondering what happened to you. When I got out of the service, I went to London and I stayed there. I got married. My wife died several years later. But I have a boy. He's a fine son. And you, have you been married? No. How long have you been in Leipzig, in this place? Twelve years. Twelve years. Should be going. We haven't fixed the strap in a while. Karen, I'll be here until Friday morning. I'm at the Astoria. Couldn't we meet? No, sir. But Leipzig's full of strangers and foreigners these days. They never recognize us. We could have dinner, you and Patrick and me. It is not a risk I can take. Are you asking me to turn around and walk out of here after all of these years, Karen? It's impossible. Can't we go somewhere, a park, a, a cafe? Already you have stayed too long. Ten minutes, Karen. Didn't they tell you what it would be like? I didn't know you were coming. I didn't know who was coming or... When it would be, I, I'm not supposed to ask, I'm not supposed to know. I, I thought you were dead, Sam. And not until 48 hours ago, till just now. I didn't know it was to be you, standing here. Oh, God. Oh, boss. What? Please. Yes, sir. I hope you'll be satisfied. I'm sure I will be. I'll phone you. Was wünschen Sie bitte? Kommt was durch, pass auf. Das Urarmband ist ausgewechselt. Leker hat Chromadecker Geschäft verlassen. What strap has been changed? Leker has left Chromadecker. Repeat. Leker has left Chromadecker. The Leipzig Eisenbahn. Oh, uh, tell me, you are you are English, huh? Yes, sir. Ah, come, come, we won't use this. I will uh, uh, sp uh, speak in English to you. Uh, all right? Uh, do you like trains? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, well, t tell me something. Uh, have you seen the display of trains we have outside there? Uh, with, with airplanes and no. tunnels? No. Uh, would you like to go and see it? Huh? Come. Yes. Yeah, come, we, we, we go. Huh? It's very good. Mr. Laker. Yes. Mr. Samuel Laker. Yes, that's right. I'm afraid there's been an accident. Your son has what been... What accident? What are you talking about? He fell down some stairs. He fell down... What? Was it bad? He was unconscious when they put him in the ambulance. How long ago did it happen? About half an hour ago. Well, how was he hurt? Was it his head or what? I couldn't tell you exactly, but don't alarm yourself too much, Mr. Laker. But you just told me he was unconscious when they put him in the ambulance. Yes, but I don't know exactly. Look, how, how did you know me? Sorry? How did you know me? How did you know I would be here? Your son told me you would be here. Oh, then he was able to speak. Originally, yes. 
Wait a minute. Who are you? I, I don't understand this. Where is my son? Keep very quiet, Mr. Laker. Nothing will happen to you. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you, Mr. Laker. Do as I tell you, and nothing will happen to you. This way, please, Mr. Laker. I'd like to know why I was brought here and who the hell you are. Mr. Laker. My name is Hartman, Colonel Hartman. I have the honor of being connected with the State Security Service. Please sit down. I see your son's birthday is the same as mine, Mr. Leaker. Colonel, I have a right to know why I was brought here. Your rights begin and end with me. Tell me, Mr. Leaker, how did you and your son spend this afternoon? Oh, we... we looked about the fair. You looked about the fair? Uh, they did what exactly? Sport goods, camera equipment. You design and manufacture office equipment, Mr. Leaker. Didn't you see what you specifically came for? Well, we also came on holiday, so I followed my boy this afternoon, and tomorrow I... Where else did you go, Mr. Laker? You mean personally? Personally, yes. What de decided you to separate from your son? I had to have my watch repaired. Oh, uh, what repair exactly? It needed a new strap. And where did you go? To a shop on, um, Louisa Strasse. Louisa Strasse? And, and the name of this shop? I believe it was, uh, Chromadecker. Uh, why is there? Why not? What made you choose that particular shop? It was recommended. By whom? Well, you see, uh, my strap broke while I was on the aircraft, and the fellow passenger recommended it. Shop. Mr. Laker, there are... Half a dozen places you could have gone to within walking distance of the Astoria Hotel. Perhaps, but I've never been here before, so I... The only reason for going to Crom and Decker was to have your watch attended to. Yes. No other reason. You would swear to that? Yes. When did you write the Crom and Decker number in your diary? Uh, on the airplane. Why not the address? Well, he didn't... I guess I didn't think about it. Ah, uh, a telephone number only by this uh, stranger on an aircraft. Correct. Do you expect me to believe that? But it's true. You are very much a novice, Mr. Laker. Bring the woman in.
Do you know this man? Yes. Explain how you know him. He called at my shop. Speak up. He called at my shop. When? This afternoon. For what purpose? To renew the strap of his watch. I already told you that. What was sewn in the old strap, Fräulein, the ones that he left with you? Microfilm. You see, Mr. Laker, or do you still insist that your arrest is without cause? I don't know what you're talking about. No? No. Are you making out that the woman is a liar? No, of course not. Go away. I'm sorry. Spare me, please, the story that you were merely doing a friend of yours in London uh, a favor. Uh, oh, I've heard that one too many times. I want to see my boy. That will not be possible. There's not enough time. It is a pity your country does not recognize the German Democratic Republic. This says... Uh, you will soon discover is greatly to your disadvantage. Since it means that what are sometimes called your interests cannot be safeguarded. Outside. This will do fine, Mr. Laker. Not today, Mr. Laker. We'll forget it this time. <coughs> As good as new, Mr. Laker. Get dressed, please. You're going for a drive. Please inside, Mr. Laker. How are you feeling, Mr. Laker? 
You're feeling a little bit better, I hope. Don't just stand there. Come up and join me. The staircase is just in front of you. That's it. Ah, you're looking much better, Mr. Laker. Uh, that was quite an experience in the woods, no? Come on up. Tell me, Mr. Laker, when did you last uh, handle a gun? 1945. Not since then. Well, I thought you would need some practice. Come with me, Mr. Laker. Come in and see what good purposes we turn the confiscated houses of the rich. Come in, my friend. There is a job to be done. There's a very special job. It'll mean you being taken from here and, and set free. By tomorrow, you'll be in Copenhagen. Cop? What for? To kill someone. To kill someone? Yeah. Does, uh, does that shock you so? You are a soldier, Mr. Laker, huh? Yes. Well, uh, killing was your duty then, a daily duty. I wasn't in the SS. And neither was I, Mr. Laker. I did not have the good fortune. I was too young. You're the one who has killed before. You've got the wrong man. You will do it, Mr. Laker. You're beginning to think about the forest, aren't you? I put you there so you will know exactly what your son will experience if you fail in Copenhagen. And the only difference will be that Unfortunately, in his case, there will be no last second reprieve. Have I made myself clear? From the moment you are liberated until you complete this assignment, it is going to be zero hour for him. Now, take your coat off, relax, come over here and let us see how good a shot you are. Come. It's on safety. Dirty, lousy bastard. Mr. Laker, you tried to fool me. Thank you. This is the man you are going to kill. His name is Rudolf Frenzel. You might have heard of him. He made the headlines some time ago in the past. But it's not the past we're worried about. It's the present. Tomorrow, he visits Copenhagen. He has reservation at the Royal Hotel, sixth floor, middle suite. Now, you will find that accommodation has been provided for you directly across the street from where Frenzil is staying. With a telescopic sight. You should have no difficulty in shooting him. Why so pensive, my little comrade? Hmm? Are you thinking about the whereabouts of those busy British bees? Hmm?
rejoice, my friend. Tomorrow we begin our adventurous journey. I shall be conducting you to some most exotic places. What have you heard about Lega? He had to change planes in Berlin, but he's on his way to Copenhagen now. Uh -huh. Good. I think you better notify London. Lega is on the way to Copenhagen. And he's signed with Hartmann. Sir, message just received from East Germany. Lega is en route to Copenhagen. The message is signed by Hartmann. You better get ready. Lake is on his way to Copenhagen. You see, Hartman's done the trick. I'd love to see Lake's face when they told him about the watch. He believed it. That's the main thing. Oh, Slattery. Yeah. I've had a call from Sector D. If you finish with Karen Gasavius, they could use her. Sorry, she's been returned to her other duties. Lake is on his way. Excellent. Now you're all set for the motivation in Copenhagen. Quite. I understand this point very well, Doctor. I served with Laker during the war. I think I know what's needed. Laker and come to Copenhagen with interflug from Schönefeld, Berlin. And I'm now on the way to the terminal at Hotel Royal in a SAS bus. Laker ist in Kopenhagen per Interflug von Berlin-Schönefeld eingetroffen. Er ist jetzt auf dem Wege im SAS-Autobus zum Air Terminal Kopenhagen im Royal Hotel. The only thing that worries me, Doctor, is what if he tries to do things his own way when he gets there? That's the risk we have to take. But we should have Sam Laker blaming himself for the situation he's now in. Self-blame or self-pity tends to immobilize, make the person so affected incapable of independent action. In other words, Mr. Slattery, you might favorably compare Mr. Laker to a marionette controlled by strings. Our problem is to pull the right one. I want to place a person the person called to London. Um, look, never mind, operator. Um, no person the person. I'd like to make a straight call, please. No, no, just straight. Yes, yes. Who's that? I'm sorry, London. Your caller has hung up. Okay. Heard anything from Copenhagen? Only that Lika has arrived from Leipzig. Nothing else? Nothing else yet.
I uh, had a phone call earlier. I think it was Laker, but he rang off. Something might have gone wrong. He should be meeting the girl in Tivoli Gardens now. Yes. What about the girl? What do we know about her? She belongs to Sector B. Charlie. I'm sure she's absolutely reliable. Then why the hell haven't we heard? What have you heard from Joseph in Copenhagen? The girl has not made contact with Laker in the Tivoli Gardens yet. Is he? The girl's hotel room all set? There was some confusion over the hotel booking, but they are working on it now. Confusion book? Now you tell them that we must have room 507, otherwise we can, we, we can call the whole thing off. I mean, what is the matter with them? Don't say no that room 507 is the only possible room with a vantage point in the Frenzel Suite. Hotelzimmer Reservation für Fräulein M nicht bestätigt. Ich versuche weiter. Hartmann. Sir, message from Hartmann. The booking for the girls' hotel room is not confirmed. I'm working on it. Tell Hartman if that hotel room isn't ready within the hour, we'll have to cancel everything. Very well, sir. I must have room 507. I have told you, sir, the room is taken. My sister has just come out of hospital. She is very superstitious. The view is sir, just I, right. I've told you, if I could get you to the room, I would give it to you willingly. But there are other rooms on the same floor. That room, I must have that room. What is your name? Sir, giving you my name is not going to alter the fact that I can give you the room. I've told you, the booking was taken by another receptionist. I'd do anything to give you this room, but it, the a booking little is present, confirmed. A little present. Can you manage a light? A light? Thank you. You know, your picture didn't do you justice. But you're very punctual, I'll say that. I think you're making a mistake. No, it's no mistake. Shall we go? Sir, there's a message coming in from Copenhagen. Everything fixed at hotel. Girls' room prepared as arranged. Notify London. We don't want Slattery to get a heart attack. There's scotch if you want it. It's all paid for. Everything is. So help yourself. Take your coat off. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Huh? Why don't you relax? There's only us two here. And you're not afraid of me, are you? I haven't got any terrible secrets, you know. What are you looking at over there? Look, I'll be out in a minute. Then you can come in and take a bath. You'll feel much better. What are you doing? 
I'm going to bed. You're married. Is that it? Since then, you haven't had anybody but your wife? Is that it? Nothing personal. I just need some rest. We've been waiting for you, Slattery. I'm sorry to be late. I, uh, got a little held up. Everything all right up there? It is now, sir. Jackson should be going. Right. Now, I fixed your cover in Copenhagen, Jackson. You'll join the British Embassy there. Check in there straight away. Right. It's up to you now. You're responsible for that part of the operation. I've studied the plan, sir. I'm clear on it. Uh, Slattery, if it's all right with you, I'd like Jackson to report back directly to me. Should there be a slip-up, I'd have to uh, inform the Cabinet immediately. I understand that, sir. Now, Jackson, when you get to Copenhagen, confirm the Royal Hotel is holding a suite for Frenzel. Right. Jackson, I'd better not be a slip-up. Tomorrow's the vital day. Yes, operator. I'd like to call London, England. Is there a delay? Not at this time, sir. What number are you calling? The Gerard five six double one. Gerard five six double yes. one. And what is your number, please? Um, Aster two three nine four. I'll try to put you through right away. Just one moment. Can you hurry, please? I'm putting you through now, sir. Go ahead, caller. Hello. I'd like to talk to Martin Slattery. Sam? Martin, listen to me carefully. Where are you? I'm in Copenhagen. Where? Copenhagen. I'm in trouble, Martin. Bad trouble. They've got Patrick and they want me to go after a man named Frenzel. Now hold on, Sam. Wait. You hold on. Sam, this is an open line. Use your head. Scramble the call. Oh, to hell with that. Now do it my way, Sam. I'm warning you. My way. Now, question and answer. You dropped in at Kay's? Yes. You found you were expected? Yes. Who did the talking? Charming gentleman named Hartman. SSD. About Patrick? Yes. Patrick stayed on, I take it? Correct. I didn't get the other person's name. Frenzel. F-R-E-N-Z-E-L. Rudolph. Is he there now? No, he's due here from Paris at 6 o'clock tonight. And it's a case of either or. Is that the proposition? That's right. Now, what are you going to do about it? I'll alert Paris. That's the first thing. Our friend won't fly. Do you understand? He won't arrive. He must arrive. For God's sake, don't stop him. If I don't kill Frenzel, I'll kill Patrick. Sam, listen. No, you listen. Leave Frenzel alone. I'll be in touch. How? Richard Jackson of the British Embassy. How can I contact Jackson? I can't go there. Haven't you the picture yet? Can't you telephone? No, I can't risk it. A flattery. If you won't do anything about it, I will. I'll have to go through with it and don't try to stop me. If you want to do something, leave word at the Royal Hotel. The Royal. And if there isn't something by six o'clock tonight, I'll know exactly where I stand. And one thing more. If they kill the boy, I'll kill you. I want it confirmed that a suitcase is being held in the handles bank in the name of George Marshall. And I want it also confirmed 
that a suite is being held for Frenzel in the Royal Hotel. And tell them, no mix-ups this time, please. Your speed constant, driver. Slow down. Sit down, please, Mr. Marshall. Is everything satisfactory? Very. Come, friends, off we go now, eh? Has Laker picked up the rifle from the bank yet? We haven't heard. Well, has he left the hotel then? We haven't heard anything. No word from Jackson? No. Nothing? Nothing at all. What's Jackson playing at? Laker has collected the rifle from the bank. Can you deal with that now? Of course. Then everything is set at the hotel? I'm settling that now, sir. Room 507, please. Thank you. Hello? Do it now. Now? Do it now. Don't come in. You can't stay here. I don't want you to stay here. I know you're angry, and you've got a right to be. I just wasn't myself last night. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. If you don't go, I'm going to call the police. It's important that I stay here. I can't explain it, but I must stay here. 
Even for a few hours, I'll pay you. I've got to stay here. The police, please. Get me the police. My apologies, Mr. Laker, but we must detain you while your case is being investigated. The girl is in a highly emotional state, and until we know whether she wishes to charge you or not, you must remain with us. Take him downstairs. Sir, Lake has been arrested. Get me slattery. Please. I understand that Mr. Laker has been arrested. Yes, we heard that. He better get out on time. You worry too much. Good day. Good day. Lake upstairs. Is he all right? Well, he's all right now, but he gave us a bit of trouble. Oh, that's too bad. Do you want to come up now? Joseph, shall we get Mr. Laker released now? Give him a few more minutes. No British agents in sight. <laughs> Don't worry, Frenzel. We'll soon be there. <laughs> Good day. Richard Jackson, British Embassy. Mr. Laker here? Ah. Thank you, thank you so much. Mr. Laker. Richard Jackson from the MC. I am. I gather you've been kept dangling about for quite a while. Only four hours. <laughs> I really am sorry, but I didn't get your message, you see. I was uh, not in the office during the afternoon, and it was only half an hour ago that the switchboard uh, managed to catch me. Glass in hand, as it were. Mr. Jackson, I've got to get out of here. Now, they're holding me on a ridiculous technicality of some sort. I'm not under arrest, mind you. They say that the girl must charge me with something or not charge me with something. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's all fixed. I've had a word with them. You mean I can go? Yes. Slattery told me to ask for you. Oh, yes, yes, I was coming to that. You heard from him. You have a message for me. He wanted you to know that he's doing everything he can. That's all. Everything he can, unquote. That's all? <laughs> it's all as far as I know. The uh, switchboard took the message, you see, whilst I was drinking the Italian ambassador's health. Do you know what time the message came in? About uh, six o'clock, I understand. And there was nothing else, nothing? No, nothing. Does it make the sense it should? Does it? You fellas are so damn mysterious. Well, we'd better go. Pick up your passport and say goodbye.
Royal Hotel. Reception here? Uh, yes. Uh, has Mr. Frenzel checked in yet? Mr. Rudolph Frenzel. Frenzel, 608. Thank you. But since then, callers, the reservation has been cancelled. Mr. Frenzel relinquished his booking at 6 o'clock this evening. Are you there, caller? Caller? Are you there? Caller? Are you there? Well, Joseph, that takes care of Mr. Frenzel. It's safe to descend, Frenzel. <laughs> Where are we? A little place east of Frankfurt. We prefer the picturesque routes. <laughs> Lake has been told that Frenzel's cancelled his arrival. I've notified Hartman to send the telegram about the boy. Will it work? It'll work. Are you very sure of yourself, Slattery? Yes, sir. I worked with Laker during the war, I know him. He was a killer. That was wartime. People act differently under stress. That was what Copenhagen was all about, sir. That's why I wanted him to believe that Frenzel was really going to be there. And if he didn't get him, Hartman would kill his boy. I wanted to put him under stress like wartime. Create incidents. Like getting him kicked out of the girl's room. Getting him detained by the police. Anything to get him rattled. To get him insecure. To get him ready to fight. When he gets that telegram. And he thinks his son is dead. Sam Lake is going to become a killer again and go for the man responsible. Patrick, wake up. Wake up! Now, I want you to get dressed as quickly as you can because we've got to go.
I'll check your bag for you, sir. I'll carry it with me. It'll be no trouble at all to check it through. No, I'd rather have it with me. Suit yourself, sir, but you would find it more convenient. No, thanks. Very well. Have a good flight, sir. Thanks. Well, you'd better give me the other one back. Very well, sir. I am sorry, sir. Laker has left for Leipzig on Interflug flight number 603. He is carrying rifle case. Laker is nach Leipzig per Interflug 603 gestartet. Laker's on his way to Leipzig, sir. Good. Well... I'll get home and get some sleep. The only thing is, there's been a slip-up. Hmm? Jackson slipped up. What's happened? Lake is carrying the rifle with him. But Jackson's supposed to get it away from him. He was supposed to, sir, but he didn't. I'd arranged to have another rifle waiting in Leipzig. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hello? Peter told me you had a room to let. Hartman? Hmm? Did you have a good flight? Splendid. How are you? Very well. Has he arrived? Mm -hmm. Yes, he's here. Good. Well, we better get going. We've got work to do. Come. I spoke to on the telephone. I will be with you in one moment. The room is upstairs. Can you help me find out if someone is dead? Who? My son. Where is the boy supposed to be? There's a Colonel Hartman, I believe, has him. Forgive me, but I know Hartman. I know the kind of person he is. He is evil. Do not pin your hopes too high. I will try to find out.
of foreign youth identified by papers on his person as Patrick Laker. Last night received fatal injuries believed to have been caused by a motor vehicle on the Valde Place. He was dead on arrival at the university clinic. I'm sorry. Very sorry. Where does Hartman live? He has an apartment in SSD headquarters. Nothing else? No. I want to find out where he goes. I want to be able to get at him. According to our information, they will be moving French across from West Germany into the east by car. There's an airplane waiting at Leipzig Airport to take him into Moscow. There's part of an unopened autobahn running into the airport. Now, it doesn't matter where he crosses the border. We are certain that they must go along this road. Now, as they must cross the border during the night, and as no airplane is capable of taking off from Leipzig Airport other than during the day, we have calculated to within one hour to when friends will be moving along the autobahn. Now, the important thing is to get Leica onto that autobahn. I have prepared friends a schedule, which Lekka will, of course, be told is Hartman's schedule. Now, your contact knows what she has to do, huh? She does. Joseph, let me get the car ready and take Mr. Slagger. See you later. You will be in the second car. If anything goes wrong, you know what to do. Laker has asked me to locate Hartman for him. How does he feel? How do you think a man feels who hears his son is dead? Is he angry enough to kill? Yes. Good. Everything's worked out perfectly. I've got Hartman's schedule here. Every move he'll make. Let Laker know and go with him. Buy him. Buy a man with his son. Why not one of your agents? We knew his connection with Karen Gisavius. He's the finest marksman I've ever known. Perfect. All right, do you think you have to exploit a man in this way? He agreed to deliver a message for you, no more, no less. Now he is going to kill a man. Nobody made that decision for him. It's his own decision to kill. What a remarkable man you are, Mr. Slattery. To split hairs like that about who will be responsible. I have my duty. schedule. We must go over it carefully together. How did you become involved in all this? Was it the woman at Chromadecker that you told me about? Karen. I was dropped behind the German lines to do a job. And she was one of a group they sent to help me. 
We spent many weeks together. I couldn't have done it without her, actually. And of course, all the hiding in the hills with the wet and the dampness made her quite ill. I could hear her lungs bubbling every time she breathed. Her skin burned in the cold. There was nothing else I could do but leave her. Through all of these years, I thought she was dead. And Slattery came along and told me she was alive and in bad trouble. But they knew I was coming. And Slattery knew it. He knew what he was sending Patrick and me into. He knew it. Just think about Hartman. Only about him. It's time to go. Unfortunately, this is where we part company. You will be driven across the border to Leipzig, where an aircraft is waiting to fly to Moscow. Be happy, my little comrade. <laughs> Nothing can happen to you now. I'm afraid we must go now. You must get out now. They will be coming this way. There will be two cars. Hartman in the first one, the gray one. I will be pulled up ahead with a hood up. Watch me all the time. When I see them coming, I will shut the hood. When you have killed him, go through the tunnel. There will be a car waiting for you there. Good luck.
it, sir! Hold it! Mr. Laker, your child is safe! Your child is safe! I have guarded him personally all the time! I just killed you. No, Sam. You got the one we wanted you to get. Now, come on, let's go. You mean this was... all a setup? I was set up. That's right, Sam. Now, come on, get in the car. Come on, Mr. Come on, get out of here.